Hi everyone, welcome to the presentation. Just a quick reminder, this is one section of my Federal Grants 360 workshop. Rather than run through all of the slides and talk for God knows how long, I decided to break the, uh, the workshop down into several easily digestible presentations, and I hope you uh, find them useful. All slides are available at thegrantdoctors.com. My objective in this particular presentation is to share a few things I've learned from managing grants over the past 20 years. Most of them I picked up on uh, from other colleagues by word of mouth or simply by doing them. So rather than keeping them unwritten, I decided to finally put in writing all of these tips that I learned. If you manage grants and you've picked up on a few tips of your own, feel free to share them with me and I will, with proper credit of course, include them in the next version of this presentation. And before we get started, I just want to take a quick moment to thank you all for being here. I know we, we have a limited number of hours every day and I greatly appreciate the time that you're investing with me, and I will do my best to provide you with some value. And with that, let's get started. So the first tip really is common sense. Do what you said you'd do. Uh, you know, you wrote a proposal. The reviewers accepted it. They gave you money. Well, now it's time to get to work and... Do exactly what you said. Uh, it sounds like common sense, but you'd be surprised just how many how many grantees decide to completely change their program once they receive funding. And I know I've been in several of those meetings where the top dog will say, you know, I know we said we were going to do X, but yeah, we're going to do Y instead now. Hmm. You know, and, it, and Y may not be exactly what the funder wants. So... You know, unless there's really a good justification for a radical change to your program, stick with this. Just do what you said you were going to do. Now, the second tip should also be common sense. Spend your money. I've seen a lot of instances when organizations are awarded millions of dollars, but at the end of their grant term, they've spent only a few hundred thousand and they're scrambling to get a one year extension so they can, you know, piece together a little bit of success from all the time they wasted. Um, you know, and I've also seen it with smaller $50,000 grants where you get the award and then people sit for a year or more, will not have taken any action. And at the end of the grant term, they are still sitting with nearly all of their money left. And to me, that's pathetic. Uh, you know, it, it's why it's so important to have everyone on the same page when the proposal is being prepared and immediately after funding is received. You know, this money won't last forever. And if you waste your time, you're wasting an opportunity. You know, you went after the grant, you asked for the funds. If you get them, you gotta you gotta get to work. Now here's something a lot of people don't realize. The funder does not want the money back. Taking money back from a grantee, either because they didn't spend it or because they misspent it, makes the funding agency look bad to Congress, and to the administration. Nobody wants that. So if you end up returning money prematurely, the agency can probably find another organization to use the money, but it's a giant hassle. So don't put your funder in this position. If something goes wrong... Here's an easy one. Fix it. Whether it's misspending the money, 
losing a critical partner, whatever. Just admit it, fix it, and move on. Small problems you'll want to fix internally. Probably not a need to contact the funder. Big problems, that's when you'll want to notify the feds, um, inform them of the problem, and tell them about your active corrective action plan. You want them to know that you discovered the problem and that you're already addressing addressing it. You don't tell them about a problem and when they come to you and say, well, what are you doing about it? <clears throat> you just give them silence on the phone. You want to reassure them that you're already take, taking steps to correct the problem and to make sure it doesn't happen again. Now, first thing is you're going to have to decide what's a big problem versus a small one. And that's going to be up to your good judgment and possibly even your policies and procedures. So if you decide that something has gone horribly wrong, come up with a plan to fix it, start to fix it, and then notify your program officer. Look, the, the feds are always willing to work with you if you're upfront about compliance matters. They want to know that you're policing yourself and solving things. Don't sweep anything under the rug and surprise them later. You're going to earn a lot of credibility and trust with the federal agencies if you self-police and report as necessary. This one's simple. Look, the feds want you to be successful. They want you to succeed because in return, they will look successful. The more successful their grantees are, the better they look to Congress. So it's a symbiotic relationship between the funder and the grant, uh, the grant recipient. Some call it a public-private partnership. Some say you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. However you describe it, it's a partnership, so work it. Make your program officer in the department look good. Sing their praises as much as you can. If your grant is really successful, you need to crush it with your communications plan. You need to just promote the hell out of it on social media, contact your local and state officials, and of course, notify all of your federal officials, whether through professionally made communications materials or Capitol Hill visits or both. You know, some people have the attitude that, yeah, federal grants are taxpayer, dollar, taxpayer dollars and shouldn't, uh, shouldn't need to thank the funding agency for granting them money. Yeah, I get that. It, it's one approach, uh, but here's the thing. It's not about gushing or just you know, going over the top and thanking the federal agency or your congressman or congresswoman for the money. You know, you're just simply emphasizing the success of your program and the benefits of your partnership with the federal funding agency. It's simple as that. Just make them look good. Quantify your success. Not just in terms of the evaluation measures that were in the grant. Try to go beyond that. Think in terms of how many new jobs were created if you hired new people with the grant funds. How many contractors were put to work? Uh, think about the efficiency of the grant dollars in terms of cost per person served, if you can use that metric. If you're going to report your success to your congressman or senator, Contact one of their staff members first to maybe find out what data is important to them. That'll help drive a lot of your messaging. Make the regulations work for you. That's another great tip. Know the grant management regulations in detail. I mean, hopefully you know them inside and out, but you don't have to know them, you know, every letter of, of every section. But you, you really you don't assume that your program officer knows the regulations better than you. Um, you want to know them well enough to find 
creative ways around a potential no from your program officer. And this is specifically when you're looking to make a change to your program that requires prior approval from the agency. You know, a lot of times their default reaction will be to say no. But if you know the regs well enough, you can see those potential hurdles in advance and craft your um, uh, your request in such a way that you almost automatically get to yes. Pick up the phone. Don't be afraid to call your program officer. They want to hear from you. Uh, you know, whether it's with a success story or with a question or an issue. I mean, they want to help because, again, going back to a couple of slides earlier, your success is their success. So they're always willing to talk to you and answer questions. Um, you know, talk about any program uh, challenges you're facing or any potential scope changes you're considering. You know, if you talk through your issues together, you can jointly craft uh, a written request if one is needed, if you want to make a change to a program, uh, you know, your program officer won't help you write anything as far as the prior approval request. But, you know, they'll help guide you through the process with certain keywords that you may want to include um, in your document. So make sure that you're, you know, being perceptive when you're talking to them. Kind of pick up on their verbal cues and any, any little tips that they provide you. And finally, check the box. Your program officer might occasionally ask you for random information you weren't expecting. And understand that they do this for a reason. It's not to make you jump through hoops just for the hell of it. Most often is to help them get a better understanding of your program. Other times they might be responding to a congressional request. And also it might be to simply check a box that they have on their monitoring form. So when they unexpectedly ask you for information, just give them what they ask for. If they give you an unrealistic deadline time frame, tell them you need more time. But if they don't budge, submit what you have on time and then submit a more complete report a day or two later. You know, there's no, there's no harm in that. Well, that's all I have, at least for this presentation. Thank you very much for listening to me. And again, I appreciate the time you spent here. If you have any questions, just email me through my website or reach out on uh, social media. I'm here to help. And if you found this useful, give it a thumbs up below. Feel free to leave a comment. I love feedback. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future presentations. Thanks.